learners parents teachers we will continue the first lesson who did patrick's homework part 3 in this lesson we will understand the text we will recall recapitulate what has been learned in the first two lessons understanding the text then we will do the speaking activity and how to speak when you speak to someone the third one will be is a writing activity please to write an idea to write so with me is kriti hello she was there in the last two classes so we will jointly do this before we move on to the lesson let's understand the objectives or the learning outcomes of this lesson at the end of this lesson you learners will be able to read a variety of texts in english and identify main ideas characters sequence of ideas and events and relates with your personal experience that's the real pa- patrick's lesson we read we understood now we also have experience that we are able to connect with that let me request kriti to read uh, the second and third objectives the learners would be able to respond to a variety of questions on familiar and unfamiliar texts verbally and in writing use appropriate words to deduce meanings from clues in context while reading a variety of texts so we have learned some words and we will be using them in context this is with reference to vocabulary and uh, speaking and with reference to writing we will draft revise write short paragraphs based on verbal print and visual cues so the input ideas you may be asked given a written text a, a visual we are going to write it then how we are going to do is we will draft jot down ideas we will see that it's called process approach to writing okay. and we write coherently with fo- focus on appropriate beginning middle and end so like like a good movie there will be a beginning middle and an end so in any, any story you you can notice it so writing also okay before we move on to uh, the activities let's summarize the story for your understanding better understanding as well as our understanding yeah. okay uh who did patrick's homework it's a kind of summary and sub text we are creating now kriti why don't you read uh, the summary of the story sure sir so let's summarize the story Patrick did not want to complete his homework because he hated homework and liked to play sports. One day Patrick's cat caught an elf and was playing with it. Then the elf saw Patrick and promised Patrick to grant him a wish if Patrick saved him from the cat. Patrick agreed and told the elf that he had to complete all Patrick's homework till the end of the semester. The elf reluctantly agreed. but he told patrick that he would need his help because the elf did not know how to do homework every day the elf asked patrick's help by making patrick to find the words in a dictionary or to add or subtract maths problems ultimately he was doing it yes yeah. finally on the last day when the school was over the elf slipped from the back door and when the results were out patrick got a's okay if we know very well it's very interesting kind of uh, very clever uh, kind of thing yes. uh, the elf did uh, to uh, patrick so we know who did and patrick still blames he has done the work yes. okay now let's look at this uh, screen and see some of the usages which patrick uses or the or writer of the story uses to convey meaning so notice the following expressions in the story let me read out homework too boring he played hockey and basketball and nintendo instead look at kriti do you notice homework too boring Yes. In spoken English, we often do not say full sentences. Full sentences. Suppose sometimes the friends walk, we say, "Coming." Yeah. What does it mean? Are you yeah. coming? Yeah. So, this kind of expressions writers use, and we use the real life uh, usage. Scenarios. Yes. Uh, suppose we say, "Joking." No, I don't believe it. Yeah. So those kinds of things. So supposing the above sentence, homework too boring. He played hockey and basketball and Nintendo instead. Okay. 
can be expanded and written like this he did not like to do homework because he found it very boring instead of it he liked to play hockey and basketball and nintendo so but the writer has to convey pragmatic and the real, real life conversation yes. so that is not very formal mm. so learners let's understand when we speak uh, when we write a dialogue for a movie a drama it's actually people's act mm. if we call it speech, speech act acts. speech is an act yeah. it discussed uh, in the last lesson also so let's learn how the author is using this so here are some such usages for you kriti could you read out yes joking it has no substance I do not believe this. Kidding. Be serious. Our teacher will be here now. Writing letters. Boring. I go for email. Stay away from mobile phone. It is spoiling children. Fine. I am reading out again. Joking. It has no substance. I don't believe this. Joking. Yeah. Then look at again. Kidding. Be serious. our teacher will be here now when the teacher comes in the class becomes very serious yeah. writing letters boring i'll go for email yeah. stay away from mobile phones it's spoiling, spoiling children, children. Okay. how this can be written let's see one after another how they are expanded joking it has no substance i don't believe this how this can be written kriti are you joking i do not believe in whatever you have said it has no substance kidding be serious our teacher will be here now don't behave like a kid you should be serious and the teacher is reaching our class now fine this is how it's expected look at the other sentence uh, very, very interesting are uh, writing letters boring i go for email i do not like to write letters as it makes me bored okay and i'll write emails i write hmm. emails stay away from mobile phone it's spoiling children Don't spend much time on mobile phones because it is spoiling children. Okay. When we speak in any language this kind of things happen. Uh we use and that makes the conversation dialogue any play short story interesting. That's what we call it authentic writing, hmm. natural writing. Hmm. It makes language natural. And if you really recall children uh learners you find we never feel that we think when we speak in our mother tongue yes we get angry yeah. it comes all in a sudden and sometimes when we learn english or any foreign language we feel that oh i have to find a word and say yes so actually when we learn english for 12 years we should also be able to uh, speak english language or any other second language foreign language as naturally, naturally. as uh, our mother, mother tongue. tongue language so for that we need to go for natural language hmm. the natural language is the way we are speaking yes. it's a formal language yes. our children speak hmm. go asking for something so we'll see it later now this is what children you should know when you speak someone speaks on the television uh, in the real life conversation you may notice such usages we'll come to that later now Patrick feels bored. Kriti, yes. Uh, he was very, very bored and said, "I don't want to uh, do homework. Yeah. Let, let me uh, play. I, 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 something like that." He says, "I play basketball. This, that." Patrick feels bad about doing homework. Yes, of course. He, he says, does. "What he says?" Patrick feels bad about doing homework. He says, "Homework boring." Homework is so boring. So boring. So it is the expression of his Fe- feelings about his dislike towards homework. Yes. Somebody said, "No, no. We generally say I don't like this, particularly mm-hmm. uh-huh, food. You know, hmm. eating it. Hmm. Some days I don't like this, particularly I don't like yeah. this. So it's it's a kind of a feeling. Yeah. Like, I I love to play cricket, or I love to play this hockey. Yeah. So you may have the feelings of dislike towards homework. Think and discuss with your partner and write your feeling about homework. So we are going to write now here as we do the class. Okay." you are feeling about likes or dislikes about homework so i'm not going to ask you come on uh, start writing hmm. that will be very mechanical exercise there's a process involved in writing what is the process involved let's see when you write something what do you do you, sh- you should have what ideas ideas yes. then you should have instincts naturally yeah. words should come out then 
you gather ideas to write. Yes. So we are going to now write our feelings against homework or for homework mm -hmm. or you may have two, three points against homework, you may have two, three points for homework. But it's not that all homework is bad. Hmm. Though uh, in 1993, Government of India and even in 2005 when NCIT, Government of India came out that don't give homework up to class 4. That's fine because children have to play whatever learned. But there is a mixed feeling how much homework should be given. So we will write. How we will write, let us discuss. There is a process involved when you write it. So, what you do, I request the, uh, ask the learners that follow this process when you write anything. First, what we do, we brainstorm to collect ideas. Suppose, if I ask you, uh, Kriti, uh, how will you do, uh, you, have to write to, you have to write a paragraph hmm. which is meaningful, hmm. about expressing your dislike okay. uh, about homework. What okay. will you, how will you do that? First, I, gather ideas. Yeah, I will start thinking about why don't I like homework or why I do like homework then I will start you know appointing the uh, okay, what points. Is, what, what would be your first point? Why I don't like? Oh, yes. Okay so because it is very tedious it takes away a lot of time and uh, we don't get enough time to play or do our extracurricular activities. Okay now you brainstormed yourself. Yeah. So if I, if I, if I have to write then jot down your ideas. Yes. Then, having jotted down, let us say, five points you have jotted down. It takes away my play time. Yeah. My mother always scolds, scolds me that for uh, not doing, not the doing homework. homework yes. then, and I, I take time till the end of the day, 10 o'clock, 8 o'clock, I wait, then I start doing in a hurry hmm. So, these are the ideas you have jotted down. You yes. have to write down in pointers, in sentences, yes. not sentences, in words. Okay. Now, you have got a lot of ideas with you, hmm. but you, sh you do not know where which idea will go where. So, okay. make yeah. an outline. Yes, yes. Sir. It appears on the screen, hmm. you will say brainstorm, jot down the ideas, then make an outline. Now, outline is done. Hmm. I don't like because this, 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 this. Yeah. Then, write the ideas into sentences. Which sentence will come first? Then. You have to say, I don't like homework because one, then, then, so write sentences. So now you have got the first draft with you. Then, revise the first draft. You have revised. Oh, now again rework. You revised it. Proofread it. Edit it. Then write the final, final draft. So yes. now it appears on the screen. This is called a process approach to writing. There's a process involved. So I'm going to uh, say the steps. You read out what learners are expected to do. Okay. Brainstorming. Jot down as many ideas as you can about a given topic, then arrange the ideas in a sequence. Outlining. Create an outline for your writing. Which ideas will go first? How will they be supported by evidence? Will there be a picture, etc.? Okay. Drafting. Write first draft. Here the focus is on the content and not the form. Let me also say something about it. When you just write the first draft, you don't bother how good the sentence is. Suppose some spelling mistakes, some grammar mistakes. Ignore it because now ideas are important. Hmm. Then comes revising. Revise the first draft, improve it, add or delete ideas and improve the language. Now this is very most important thing. You revise, put it in the order and rearrange it, then proofreading. Proofread the draft with the help of the teacher. Here the focus is on the form and not the content. Okay, you have got the ideas. Now accuracy, grammatical mistakes, how sentences are formed, whether the sentence is, uh, is correct. So you have everything, you are yeah. actually doing. Here we have said, you may take the help of the teacher. Teacher, yes. The reason is, because teacher would sometimes, you may overlook some of the mistakes. Hmm. So that, that's one. Uh, then the final draft. Yeah. Write the final draft now. Oh, so learners, so process approach to writing, the processes on one side and the uh, expectations what learners do on the other side. So it starts from brainstorming to final draft. We have described it. 
dear learners when you do the work this lesson write a paragraph or two adopting the following the process approach to write so this is how uh, a good writer will uh, emerge uh, as a result of the processes you have been uh, yes. adopted otherwise what happens writing particularly any learning mm. does not uh, happen in vacuum uh, generally what say write an essay about yourself mm. i remember the most popular uh, paragraph writing was rainy day oh. even that uh, children were asked to write uh, where places there are no rains no like rain. rajasthan okay so that is a mechanical way of mm. doing things so we learn when we think something when we st uh, start gathering ideas so it also exercises our this brain Yeah. suppose don't worry if you don't find uh, if you don't get the proper uh, words and sentences mm -hmm. suppose i would suggest learners suppose i am writing a sentence in which the particular word i am not getting in english you write it in hindi while drafting mm -hmm. so you may consult the dictionary i'm saying how one learns to write well mm -hmm. you may ask how can i do it in the examination if you do every month one good write up like this following this process approach ultimately from class 6 onwards in the examinations you will be writing well and otherwise also you will be writing well yes. okay before we close this lesson on the last part of patrick who did patrick's homework uh, here are three topics for you on which you can work and develop your write up adopting the process approach this process approach which appears on your screen So here are the topics. Kriti, read out. Sure. So topic number one: mobile phones, boon or bane. Mobile phones, a boon or bane. Mobile phones are, have become now a necessity. Yes. Everybody has. Yes. It's a boon in one way. Yeah. But on the other hand, it's a curse. Yeah. It takes away our time. So come on, learners. Uh, you may take a stand. You say that uh, mobile phones are boon, boon. to society. write a paragraph or if you say that no no it's a ban it it, it ban, ban it takes a uh, time uh, it troubles us and parents scold us they is that and unnecessary things also come every second one whatsapp message comes it has no relevance to me so write about it but brainstorm jot down your ideas create an outline draft revise revise and then final so this is what process approach yes. and mobile phones boon or be yeah there yeah. the second topic is fast food problem and benefits okay you know yeah. fast food so they will write the third topic is parents expectation of children so parents expect many things for children yes. you should play you should go for art class there is that and you become engineer doctor so as a child class 6 child you are 10 12 or 11 years old how do you understand this gather ideas outline then write okay kriti we have come to the uh, close of the lesson uh, what do we expect learners to do after this lesson we have the, we have got three parts given yes delivered so we expect learners please read the Revise. story patrick yes who did patrick's homework and do the summary hmm. and the speaking activity and writing activity what are all we have done thank you very much Thank, Thank you, you for participating. So we will come with the next lesson in our next this one.